how to convert a marine band. This is a wonderful marine band, 1896 harmonica. Key of G, doesn't matter what key, they're all the same. Uh, how to convert it to screws. They're assembled with nails. If you want to put in a fabulous flat comb, uh, this is what you need to do. I, I have a few tools here. You don't need a very specialized tool. I cut a little slot with a Dremel. Uh, I ground down a little slot into the tip of this knife to help me pry off the nails. Uh, we're going to take out the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nails uh, holding the cover plates down. So you just wedge this in and pry up on those nails. Push the cover plate down and the nails pop up. Right? And then you can use the tip of the this tool to pry up and remove the nails. See, that comes out fairly easily. I'm going to do this with every one. Now, some of them will be stubborn and we'll have to take them out the reverse way. I have an alternate method for you. Now, I like to save the nails and give them back to the customer in a little dime bag. So, we'll work on these cover plates in a moment. The blow plate nails are pretty much all in the same spot. We want to remove these as well. So, uh, from the back, this is the front of the harmonica. From the back, I'm going to wedge in my paring knife. And I'm not, I'm just sort of butting up against where the, the nail is. I'm not really prying up because I don't want to bend this reed plate. But see now they're, <clears throat> they're lifted up. So I'll take them out one at a time very carefully without chopping my thumb off. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So again, I'm just getting under that corner, not advancing the blade any further than I have to. And sometimes they're a bit stiff, but I just want to lift it up. So it's lifted up, or oh, you're going to be a bugger. And that nail's coming out. I'm trying to show you at the same time. It's kind of awkward for me. I don't usually do it in this position. That looks good. Making it look easy. Now, with these nails out, I'm going to drill with a 1 16th bit through and through these holes to go down and make a little mark on the... I can even go through the blow plate, but I, I, I prefer to just make a little mark uh, so that uh, the 1 16th hole I can tap with an M2 tap, and then we'll assemble the whole thing with an M2 screw. Yeah, so I have a 1 16th drill bit. I have it shoved up as far as possible so that uh, it's really just sticking up a little bit more than a centimeter. Okay, now again, through and through these holes, using it as a pilot hole. They leave a mark on the reed plate, so I don't like that. So there's that. So you can do it the old-fashioned way, or you can use flush cut pliers to to pop out uh, to pop out each nail. Here's the blow reed plate. And you can see here the marks from the 1 16th drill bit. Now the marks don't line up with these holes because the, the nails can't occupy the same space. They have to be sort of a, uh, at a different, uh, a different spot. So we're going to toss this cone and we're going to upgrade the cone. On the draw plate we have these 1 16th holes that I'm going to tap. Here's the draw plate. We're going to tap the 1 16th of an inch hole, uh, drill holes with an M2 tap. I'm going to dip it in some, I have some mineral oil on a sponge. Always use mineral oil or some sort of lubricant when you're tapping. It'll make your tap last forever. And you want this to be straight and to go through. Pull it out. There. Now we're going to drill clearance holes uh, with uh, 3 30 seconds or 7 68 or 1 8 uh, all the way up to 1 8 
of an inch size drill bit. So you're rolling? Yep. Okay. So I, I even I cut my drill bit so that I can wedge it up. I could put it up as far as possible. I want it to stick out as little as possible. I want there to be now we're shooting. So I'm gonna nail I'm gonna drill this hole with the same bit. Okay, so now I'm going to take the draw plate. This has been tapped and you feel that it's bumpy here. The rivet feet stick out so that will never make uh, a good contact with the comb. You could, If you look through it you could see there's light shining through. So we want this to be perfectly flat. I'm going to put this on a flat uh, uh, surface. You can use a mirror, you can use glass. I'm going to wet my fingers in this wet towel and this is 220 grit sandpaper. So this was sliding around. I managed to fix it but off camera. So I did figure eights one way, figure eights another, and I'm sort of halfway there. You could see that there's a little um, it's it's not all it's brighter, but it, there's some low spots. Uh, and there's a low spot running here to here. So the air that would have been blown in this channel, hole 5, would have been shared with hole 6 and hole 4. I don't know if you can pick up that low spot here. There's also a low spot here. So I'm going to go back again and do another pass until that's all uniform. Wet my fingers and off we go. Pause. Perfect. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to round out the corners. Tell me if you can see this. I have um, some 600 grit sandpaper and some 220 grit. So I want to just uh, file this edge down with the 220 grit and, and get rid of this corner here that's sharp on the on your lip, and then with the uh, with the finer grit. Make that all really nice and smooth, right? And ni nice and rounded. Mm -hmm. And then the front, a little quick wipe on the front. The blow plate. I'm going to do the same. Now we can't flat sand the blow plate because the reeds are in the way. If I was uh, working on a custom uh, overbend harp, I would remove all the reeds and do that to get that extra bit of air tightness. Nice and smooth. <clears throat> so to get back to it we have the draw plate. There's, the holes have been tapped. Uh, it's flat sanded and the corners are rounded. I would like to rinse this off before I use it. The blow plate has been uh, drilled through and through and then we drilled clearance holes that are a bit larger. Now they have burrs. Here's a juicy little burr here. Can you see that? Oh, I just picked it off with my finger. But I got a really huge drill bit. I don't know offhand how big this is. It's bigger. And I'll just gently go through there to clear out that side. This is for aesthetics. This is for air tightness on, on, on the, the side that's going to be in contact with the comb. So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and smooth on the inside here nice and flat. So again I'm going to rinse this off. Um, get rid of the burrs on the cover plate. Same, same principle. Rinsed off the plate. Uh, put this together on the comb. Now the uh, the tapped sides are the draw sides, so the screws are going to go in through the blow side, through the um, through the clearance holes. I like to just put the screw in until it's almost at the end, and I can uh, adjust things with my fingers. Now I'm going to 
set this to where I like it. Tighten that. Make sure that it lines up on this side. Tighten that. Give it a check, it's still where it should be. And then tighten up the middle one. Now I feel that it's more airtight than a stock harp. All right, so I'm going to put the I'm going to put the covers on. They fly around. So I use the same thing. I use M2 one millimeter of uh, one centimeter, so ten millimeter long screws. They're just the right length so they don't stick out too much. Wet your finger and you don't need to use a little ratchet or uh, what do you call it? Um, a wrench. Let my finger pick up that, that nut and put it on. And there you go. You have a gorgeous and most importantly, much more responsive. Now that the harp is airtight, uh, the, the two big things that we could do to improve it would be to uh, do reed work and to do tuning. Uh, so air tightness, reed work, and tuning, those are the, th the things that are going to make your harp uh, kick butt. Air tightness is the easiest. I did this in just a few minutes. Uh, tuning you can do in just a few minutes as well. And then there's advanced reed work. Okay, I just fine tuned the four blow and four drum. I can hit that four blow pretty hard. And the overblow is there. And that's without any embossing. That's just reed shape. No embossing. Air tightness. Right there. So, there you go. Thank you so much.